Hello BookTube, this is Weekly Reads. My reading week has not gone how I planned at all. So, when I constructed my March TBR, I intended to only read books for March of the Mammoths, a storied BookTube event in which participants aim to read at least one book that is over 800 pages. I wanted to read five. Um... If you watched my weekly reads last week, you will know it did not go well at all. Um, the first three days of March saw me bail on three mammoths. Um, and I had hoped that history, that the history books I selected for March of the Mammoths, which I picked two, would see me through. That at least I would like them. Uh, it did not turn out that way. So, my plan was to read The Enlightenment, The Pursuit of Happiness, 1680-1790, to by Richie Robertson. This is a big, massive intellectual history of the Enlightenment, of uh, that 110-year period. Um, and it covers a number of topics. Uh, reason, uh, religious reform... Uh, science, politics, and government, the arts, and it focuses primarily on the Enlighteners, those philosophers and scientists and thinkers who participated in the debates, arguments, theorizing that typified the Enlightenment. Um, I got about 160 pages in between Saturday and Sunday before I decided to bail. I just, I wasn't interested. Um, the sort of the, the intellectual history just did not appeal to me at all. Um, and I was losing focus. And in fact, my lack of focus was from the very beginning. I in fact was spending about, I was having more fun actually thinking about a writing project than I was reading this book. So I ultimately decided to bail on it. Um, and that put me in a bit of a bind because as much as the Enlightenment just wasn't for me, uh, there is this tendency to, for, on my part, that when I do have these incidents, or bales, or I don't get on along with a book, that the genre, the st whatever, um, I tend to sort of turn against um, with the sort of first three books of March Mystery, of March of the Mammoths. Um, I'm not really all that interested in classics, canonical, modern, contemporary fiction, poetry, and drama. Um, so anyway, so going back to, uh, my reading plans, um, after The Enlightenment, I was planning on reading Heart of Europe by Peter H. Wilson. This is a massive history of the Holy Roman Empire. And I dipped into it a little bit on Monday, and I decided I'm going to set this aside. Um, I, yeah, I don't think I could do it, so... To, could read it. Um, so I'm going to put this aside. I don't know when I'm going to come back to it. I don't know if it'll be later this month or sometime later this year. So what did I read the rest of the week? Well, I flipped and flopped between poetry and manga. And I'm going to talk about the poetry first. So I so on Monday after I decided that I'm not going to continue with the heart of Europe, I'll put it aside. Um, I decided to reread Stars in My Eyes by Edward Field. This is a collection of poetry that um, are them thematically linked uh, by a love of film. Um, all of the poems are inspired by movies or are sort of poetic narrative poems that 
or films treatments. Um, I read this collection many times. It has been one of my favorites for a very long time. I actually wrote a paper on this collection uh, when I was a student. But recently, the more I've read the the more I've reread the collection, the less I enjoy it. And this time, I didn't particularly get on with it as well as I would have liked. Um, I noticed a number of poems, particularly the narrative poems, um, kind of don't they don't quite work either as narratives or as poems. Um, now, some of them might be intentional, like I think White Jungle Queen. I think the sort of um, unevenness of that poem is intentional. But like with Junk, uh, I never can remember what the name of it is. Is it? Oh, yeah, The Life of Joan Crawford. Um, that one, as well as Lower East Side, um, the narrative just doesn't work like tonally and sort of the events they just don't really come together particularly the life of Joan Crawford um, and a lot of the poems are I think hampered by a like there are moments of real beauty like the last few lines of whatever happened to me Caspar um, but then there are lines, there are moments that just don't work um, throughout the poems. And I think the shorter poems, I think, do tend to work a bit better than the longer ones. Although, again, those last lines of Whatever Happened to Make Caspar, I absolutely adore them. Absolutely adore them. So, anyway, so that was a tad frustrating. I was also a bit frustrated with the first few poems on my reread of Tongues of Fire by Sean Hewitt. So one of the many reading events going on in March is an Irish uh, themed read uh, reading event. And so I decided to read this because Sean Hewitt is Irish. Um, and I read the collection late last year when I first bought it and I rather liked it. But on this reread, the first few poems don't, they're weaker than the later poems. I think the later poems have, uh, are stronger. So it's like I wasn't really enjoying the first few poems, but then the later poems I really liked. And today I read Selected Poems of Giovanni Pascoli, translated by Taiji Silverman with Marina de la Puta Johnston. So this is a dual language um, collection. The even pages are in Italian, or the Italian versions of the poems, and the odd, odd no, side are, or the odd pages are the English translation. And I really enjoyed this collection. It was pretty good. Um, Maybe the translations are a tad bit too modern. I'm kind of wondering about that, but on the whole, I quite enjoyed the collection. And that brings me to the manga, which I read on Tuesday and Thursday. Um, yeah. So on Tuesday, I read three volumes of Jujutsu Kaisen uh, by Gege Akutami. I read volumes... Four and five. So there was volume three to talk about. So Jujutsu Kaisen is a manga series set in a contemporary Japan. It's about a young man named Yuji Itadori who, uh, to protect his friends from a demon attack, eats a cursed object, a body part 
of an evil sorcerer named Sakuna. And this act of consumption gives Itador uh, UG superpowers. Uh, it basically allows Sukuna to possess him. And um, Yuji, alongside a young Jujutsu sorcerer named Megumi, managed to defeat the demon uh, before Sukuna then tries to take over. Um, Sukuna is defeated, and Yuji takes back control, but Yuji has been sentenced to death by the Jujutsu sorcerer community. Um, but uh, one of them argued for a reprieve so that basically Yuji, since he can survive eating the cursed relics of Sukuna, to basically eat them all once pretty much all of Sukuna is within him and then kill him. And so that way Sukuna will be dealt with permanently. So until that time comes, uh, Yuji is enrolled as a student in a Jujutsu Academy, uh, Sorcerer School. And they basically, Yuji, Megumi, and another student named Nobara uh, go on uh, like missions and stuff. And in one of their first missions, it appears that Yuji has been killed and um, basically he uh, is set for special training um, and special missions while the other two continue about their regular studies uh, before um, and so for Megumi and Nobara's plotline it's basically a build up to a goodwill event between the Tokyo branch of this school and the Kyoto branch of this school. Um, while Yuji's primary um, storyline is uh, fighting a demon alongside a senior Jujutsu sorcerer named Nanami, who um, basically, so the demon is um, basically mutilating people and um, has taken a young man under his wing as in a manipulation and I really enjoyed um I'm I'm completely flubbing uh the summary but I love these three volumes just absolutely loved it the UG story arc uh that particular arc um was brilliant I loved it the fight between Mahito the demon and um Nanami was well done um Yuji's um, role in all of it was brilliant. His uh, the budding friendship with the young man that Mahito manipulated, um, sort of Yuji's uh, fight with Mahito, brilliant. The um, school goodwill event, uh, which pretty much wraps up the volume five, was <laughs> brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I loved it. Um, just it it was fantastic. I really loved these three volumes and I went ahead and ordered four more. Um, and then on Thursday, I read uh, volume 21 of Eden Zero by Hiro Mishima, which I got in uh, this past week. It came out uh, last Tuesday. So, Eden Zero is the story of a young man named Shiki, who is the adopted uh, grandson of the demon lord, or the demon king Ziggy, an android. Um, Shiki lived all of his life on uh, a planet populated by robots that served as a tourist planet. One day, a young woman named Rebecca and her companion Happy come to the planet the android seem to malfunction and try to kill Rebecca and Happy. Shiki saves the two and he leaves with them to go on adventures to find the great gigantic cosmic goddess figure, Mother. Gradually, they uh, make friends, uh, find a ship called the Eden Zero, uh, build a crew, and go on adventures until 
eventually Zeke returns with an anti-organic life agenda and Shiki and his friends basically uh, resolve to stop him. And so that's pretty much the bulk of the later volumes. Uh, volume 21 sees the beginning of the next big arc. Um, Shiki and his crew have located Ziggy's uh, base of operations and are working on a plan with the space pirate Elsie to launch an invasion of the planet. Um, Shiki is approached by Holy, a member of the Oresian Seis Interstellar, a uh, elite organization within the interstellar government of six incredibly powerful um, people who largely act independently of each other. Um, she requests to join in the evasion because she's learned that Ziggy has made alliance with two member, or at that point, one member of the Oresenses Galactica, uh, pretty much a loose band of outlaws of incredible power um, who don't really work together, um, called Dead End Crow. And Holy has a score to settle with him. So Shiki uh, lets her join. And so it's now Holy's forces, the Eden Zero, and Elsie's pirate crew taking on Ziggy and Dead and Crow. Um, and so the first part of the volume is largely building up the plan of attack. And then the later part is the beginning of the main conflict. And oh, it is so good. I love this volume immensely. Just the interaction of uh, the crew with Holy was brilliant. Um, the humor, loved it. Um, the space battle, the space battle over Lindard, wonderful. Um, Ziggy's fight with Elsie and Justice's intervention. Uh, he was he's another member of the Orisian Space Interstellar. Wonderful. Um, the revelation that Ziggy has another ally from the Orisian Space Galactica, um, whose design is amazing. It's just I love this one so much. Like, mm. I want more of Eden Zero, definitely. So, what will I be reading this coming reading week? Um, so, I'm thinking I'm going to stick a bit with um, reading uh, books about Ireland or set in Ireland. So, I think this weekend I'm going to start with The Last Irish Question. Will 6 into 26 ever go by Glenn Patterson? This is a look at um, current Irish politics and the possibilities of, I guess, Irish unification. Um, I'm also strongly tempted to finally get around to reading At Swim Two Boys by Jenny O'Neill. This is a gay novel set in 1916 and was rather popular in the early aughts when it was first came out. I'm also strongly thinking of having another go at A History of the World with the Women Put Back In by Kirsten Luker and Yuta Dancio, translated by Ruth Achmed Achmedzai and Kemp and Jessica West. And also, I'm really enthusiastically wanting to read more manga. So I will probably read some volumes, or I would like to, depending how things go. I would like to read some volumes of Naruto by Masashi Kishimoto. Uh, My Hero Academia by Kohei Horikoshi. And Magi, The Labyrinth of Magic by Shinobu Otaka. So anyway, I don't know exactly how things are going to turn out. Um, I'll report back obviously next Friday. Um, sorry if I'm a bit down. I don't know why. Um, 
because I don't particularly like doing my, the Jujutsu Kaisen, uh, my sort of summary and just, it's like, I love those three volumes and it's just my, I, I don't know. That's maybe I'm a bit tired or knowing that I'm probably going to have to at some point uh, rearrange my library so I can move my manga somewhere because I'm really not liking them on my brother's bookcase. But anyway, so next week, besides, of course, the continuation of the library tour, which even that, I think me doing, even though these books on these towards the end, I haven't really got to yet. Um, so I could do them a bit quicker, but I'm kind of running out of steam with the library tour. So I'm going to try to make it two more videos and then a wrap up um, to talk about how things are going to change. I know for sure I want to move my manga somewhere. I'm kind of regretting not focusing a bit more on them uh, compared to the history wall. Although I'm happy that the history wall is complete, but I would have liked, um, the manga to be on a better bookcase. No offense to my brother, but that bookcase leaves much to be desired, doesn't it? <laughs> anyway, um, so I'll probably do some tag videos, uh, some, Maybe some discussion videos, although I don't know for sure, because, um, again, I do have trouble with those. Uh, but anyway, so that's my plans for this coming uh, reading week. Um, now, yeah. So I guess that's it for this reading uh, weekly read. So anyway, BookTube, I will see you next week. So until then, thank you. Have a great rest of your evening and weekend. And until Monday. Stay safe.